Your dog's been diagnosed with a very serious type of canine cancer, canine lymphoma. Are there any really effective alternate options? In this video, I'm gonna show you how I would treat my dog if she was diagnosed with lymphoma. Before we get going with the video, I really wanna thank you for being a supporter. It would really help me if you click up there to subscribe and or click that link in the box below to get a copy of my free book. Lymphoma is one of the most common cancers I diagnose and practice in our dogs. It wasn't uncommon to have a middle-aged dog coming into the practice. History of just not being quite right the last few weeks. You know, I do a brief veterinary exam. Typically what I'm doing is palpating lymph nodes under their jaw, in front of here, in front of their scapula, their shoulder blades, lymph nodes in here behind their knee. Often I'm finding all these lymph nodes enlarged. Really common to see in a dog that has multicentric lymphoma. Lymphoma, that is a cancer of the lymphocytes, those are the cells that live in the lymph nodes. 75% of dogs diagnosed with lymphoma, they have multicentric lymphoma, meaning multiple lymph nodes are involved, is likely spread to the liver and or the spleen. The specific type of lymphocyte that is involved is typically the B cell, hence B cell lymphoma. Chemotherapy is an option, standard protocol, the co-op protocol. You're looking at median survival times of about 12 months. There's a newer drug, the brand name is Tenovia. It's looking at about similar survival times. But the problem is these drugs are not a cure. And never once did I see in veterinary practice a dog that went into 100% remission with chemotherapy. Most of the dogs that we even did treat in practice, they did pretty well with chemotherapy and they didn't have the serious side effects that you typically see in people. But it's not a cure. These are some pretty toxic drugs. My dog's been diagnosed with lymphoma. What's the first thing I would do? Number one, I'd start out with diet. I'd first start by eliminating this, the carbs. There are a number of studies out now showing clear benefits of getting rid of the carbohydrates. You're eliminating the kibble and getting your dog on a high protein, high fat diet. Instead of the kibble, I get her on something like this. This is a pre-packaged, complete raw food. It's got a ton of protein, a whole bunch of these beneficial nutrients and those veggies. Number two, Next, you want to increase the amount of fat in your diet, but not just any fat, specific fat, linoleic acid. It's found in highest concentration in this oil, a safflower oil. One published study showed that a number of dogs with a specific type of lymphoma, cutaneous lymphoma, they are able to go into complete remission just using this safflower oil, high in linoleic acid. We're looking at doses at about a mil a kilo, which equates to one teaspoon for five mils for 10 pounds of body weight twice a day. Number three, the animal dewormer. This is Panicure. An old animal dewormer, very safe. I've done a number of different videos on it. I've seen a number of different pet parents say they've seen animals go into remission that have gone on Panicure. This is definitely worth giving a try. So for a 10 pound dog, we're looking at doses of 250 milligrams, which is two and a half cc's of the liquid Panicure. That's given three days on, four days off. You're gonna do that for a month and then assess, is it helping or not? Studies have shown that the Panicure acts against cancer by being a microtubular destabilizer. In terms of what it's doing is breaking down the cancer cell walls. Will it work for your dog that has lymphoma? I don't know, likely not, but there's a potential that it can and I feel it's definitely worth a try. Number four, a medicinal mushroom which has got some great research showing it to be beneficial for lymphoma. This here, this is reishi. One human review study, it showed a marked result when using this reishi against lymphoma cells, leukemia cells, even multiple myeloma. It was the most beneficial medicinal mushroom. If my dog were to have lymphoma, I'd definitely get my dog on reishi. We're looking at standard dog doses of about 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight once or twice daily. These are 400 milligram capsules. I'd be inclined to just leave it in a capsule. I'd be giving Tula one of these once a day. Number five, this is the lowly dandelion. And more importantly, it's what's in the root. There's been a number of studies, specifically University of Windsor here in Canada, showing clear benefits of using some of the ingredients within dandelion roots for some of the blood-borne cancers, i.e. lymphoma. When you dry it and you chop it up in a coffee grinder, it looks like this. I do have a specific video that shows you exactly how to make dandelion root tea tincture for a dog with cancer. Quick summary is you get the dandelion root dried, you grind it fairly fine. You're gonna add about a teaspoon per 20 pounds of body weight daily. 
you're going to add somewhere between a half to two cups of water. Regardless, you're adding that with the water. You're going to simmer it for 15 to 20 minutes. Allow it to cool. You're going to give that to your dog daily. Typically, if an animal is going to respond to the dandelion root, within about two weeks, you should see some improvement. Number six, the cannabinoids CBD, THC. They have been extensively studied for cancer and there have been a number of different animal studies showing clear benefits of the cannabinoids for cancer treatment. Cannabinoids, they provide really good pain relief. My last dog, Lewis, had a real serious type of mouth cancer. The only thing that gave him really good pain relief was CBD in combination with THC. So the thing I like about the cannabinoids is you're looking at a real big upside, minimal downside, good pain relief. Like there's a huge number of reasons for using the cannabinoids for any animal that has cancer but in particular lymphoma. Ideally, you're getting a four to one tincture extract, four parts CBD, one part THC. But if you're in an area where you can't get the THC, then look at getting the whole plant CBD extract, such as ours, Dr. Jones's Ultimate CBD for Dogs and Cats. It also contains some THC, 0.4% THC, plus some of the other beneficial healing cannabinoids. Then you're dosing your dog based on the CBD concentration, and that's three milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight twice daily. Seven, I'd add this in, this is a sleep hormone. This is melatonin. Melatonin is a potent antioxidant. It's shown to work well for people and or animals that are receiving chemotherapy and or radiation therapy. Exactly how it works, they're not 100% clear. We, you know, part of it is its antioxidant properties. All, also part of it is in modifying some of the enzyme systems that are going on in the body to potentially allow the immune system to function more effectively to allow, say, that chemotherapeutic drug to be more effective at killing those cancer cells. But it's pretty darn safe, minimal to no side effects, doses of one milligram per 10 pounds of body weight. I do that about two hours before bedtime. Eight. One of the studies that showed clear benefits of using the dewormer Panagir, the name of the drug is actually Fenbendazole, was shown that it was most effective when used in combination with a good antioxidant flavonoid supplement. Example would be my supplement, Dr. Jones's Ultimate Canine Advanced Health Formula. If you're looking at a flavonoid based supplement to add to your dog's diet, specifically a dog that has lymphoma and you're treating them with Panicure, this is a flavonoid isolated from green tea. This is EGCG. And it's the one that has the best research showing it to be the most beneficial for the majority of the cancers, including lymphoma. Standard green tea extract dose we're looking at about 10 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight twice daily. Nine. The last but not least, ensure your dog is on a good quality essential fatty acid supplement, such as this or krill oil supplement. Essential fatty acids are great anti-inflammatories and they've been shown to have a number of different anti-cancer benefits. They're kind of one of those things once again. Big upside, limited to no downside. Really safe for our dog, especially our dogs that have cancer. Thanks so much for watching this edition of Venery Secrets. Click up there to subscribe, hit the bell to sign up for notifications, and then when you click that link directly in the box below, I can send you a copy of my free book.